Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. So this video is basically a continuation of my last video. Kind of got a little heated on that video, but I think for good reason. I think the developer's um, decision to make some nerfs to some of the skills because crowd control seemed to be too, in quote, strong, in my opinion, doesn't seem, um, doesn't seem like a smart thing to do. And there are reasons why. I can understand them wanting to make and keep the game challenging, and at the same time, they have to be willing to come to terms with mistakes that they make and actually just roll along with it to be able to keep their player base valued. I think one of the reasons a division, you know, continues to lose players is not necessarily because of a lot of the issues. I think, yes, the issues are there, but a lot of players are able to just look past some of them. But one of them is really at the core of why a lot of players don't feel like they need to be investing in the division two and that's because player time is not valued i can understand that according to many of you that are you know software developers in the community you guys have told me that you know bug testing is a pain that you know you can develop and test and test and when everything gets let out you finally figure out that oh crud <laughs> well <laughs> you know there were still mistakes and i can understand that but there are some intentionalities that the de developers have had that come into the play of the game that don't necessarily have too much of an outcome uh, or that doesn't have too much of a consequence. I guess that's what I should say. So if something was broken in PvP, that is definitely understandable and needs to be tuned or fixed. But then if something is giving players an advantage in PvE, then the developers usually find themselves in a situation where they make tuning based on some of the top players in the game. And I've mentioned this in the past, you know, they said something in their patch notes about everyone running three damage and one CC and all that. But the truth is, not every team running three DPS and one CC is going to perform at the 22 minute record mark in the game. And so once you see that something like that is there, well, the top 1% of the player base who are playing that way have already exhausted their expertise. How about the remaining 90, 99% of the player base who are still coming to terms with what the game's mechanic is like and are farming and actually trying to get to that power level. What happens to them? What happens if they've actually already farmed, getting ready to start taking on the content that you dangled in front of them? Is, you know, when they get to that point, then you've basically wasted their time. And this is the theme that we've seen in the division a lot. They'll do these nerfs and do these buffs on different spectrums, expecting that players will understand and move over to some spectrum. Now, yes, some players like me, I'll probably be moving back and forth. But then what about your other players that are there in the community that have taken the time to basically do what you've encouraged them to do, which is farm and get better gear? You've effectively indirectly told them that, you know, even regardless of our mistake, we still, in a sense, have to stick with our own guns. And so, sorry, your time was all a waste. It doesn't make any sense to me. You can make the game challenging through different means. Now, many folks may say, but, you know, the game became trivialized and I would love for a little bit of a challenge. I get it. There are ways to still make the game challenge. And I think that way is being brushed under the rug by these so-called nerfs and buffs. And I have to highlight it in this video. The way to make content challenging is by bringing new content parameters that allow for you to, you know, do the challenge as you please. Example being the legendaries. The moment we got tuned in to how the legendaries could be beaten, that's when Massive should have known, well, the content cycle and the difficulty that we've all set in place for legendaries is done. Leave it over to the players. Those who've beaten it and think it's too easy, well, they've already beaten it. They've already kind of gone through the difficulty scaling and they've overcome it. That's what it should be. If you go play a game, let's say you beat, you, you play God of War on the hardest difficulty, give me God of War mode, and you've beaten it once, when you go in again to play it for the second time, maybe you want to achieve some kind of a you know, mastery or something, you should still have that competency to be able to beat all the enemy NPCs and it should be easy enough for you because you've done it before. 
that's the way a lot of single player games roll that you know makes their players who like the games come back to play them over and over again because you have mastered the game this is the case of the so-called one percent two percent or the top percentage players they have the right and they have the work and the investment to feel that way it's left to other players to be able to come to that same level and then do so now what do you do to make the game challenging both for the so-called 1% and even the 99%? It's creating content that allows for you to bend the rules even further. So how do I mean? They're working according to the confirmation that Chris Gansler uh, or somebody put, I think it was Chris that put on Reddit, they're working on a replayable PvE content cycle. This is the opportunity for them to provide a challenge in the game and take their hands off and say, nope, we want this particular piece of content to be challenging and we're gonna leave it as such. We have given players all the buffs that we feel are necessary and we've tuned the game to where we feel is necessary and players will have to figure out how to overcome this new content. That's how you do it. What we've seen is whenever they bring out this so-called difficult content, they quickly dabble into making all these so-called changes because players are actually complaining. Oh, it's so hard. Enemy NPCs are shooting me through walls and blah, 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 blah. And then they tweak the content a little bit, thereby giving players maybe extreme more power. And then they, their own goals are not being met because they're following the wind everywhere rather than doing what they actually are good at, which is making good, difficult content. They need to make content. That's what they need to make. And they need to take the content and make it to a place where it gets challenging. And once players overcome that challenge, you don't go around nerfing their gear. What kind of redundant mindset is that? What you're doing is you're prioritizing your own content over your players. That is a twisted way of looking at things. It's a tunnel vision way of looking at things. You made the content for your players. You should value your players. When you make another content piece, who's going to engage in that content piece? Who? The 1%? The 1% can pay enough money to take care of all the financial uh, goals that you have? No, it's the general audience. So what you do is the content that's now already been discovered, that the kinks have been discovered, you leave it alone. Let, let it by itself die out and expire and let nobody want to touch it. That's fine. Go on and move the community to new content down the road. And the community will be fine with waiting for that new content. Once they've discovered, oh, well, this mission is now easy for us. Well, then what do we do? Well, you wait for new content or you wait for a huge number of the player base to continue to get to that point. You cannot develop content. I know enough for the one percentile of your game. The one percentile will always knock out, you know, your hardest content in one day, farm it and accomplish almost everything in a week. But then the rest of your community is going to take them about three to eight months. OK, in the case of the division, three to eight months in some cases, if not even to a year to beat some of your content. Let me give you an example. The raid. The raid right now has a huge number of people in the community that have still not beaten the content. In fact, what's even more surprising is there's actually a specific number of people within that number that are still wanting to beat the raid. OK, if you have that same kind of an audience, then you don't go buffing the enemy NPCs in the raid and saying, well, you know, all the everyone now is in tune with the raid and everybody knows how to beat it. So we're going to nerf some gear and which they did. They nerfed a whole bunch of gear that people were using to be more effective in the raid. And then they, you know, kind of left the raid, left everybody else that has not been the raid to now still overcome a second layer of difficulty. So it doesn't, in my opinion, provide fairness because the people who found out whatever the kinks and the weaknesses or the advantages that they could have, they now have that advantage. And then you put the other section of the player base at a disadvantage. It's very redundant. And you're not going to have a game that you're, you're not you're going to be working on a dud software by the end of this year. If you follow this pattern, it doesn't serve any purpose now. I can understand that the development team, we pro they probably made a mistake in testing or maybe, you know, they're like, well, we didn't do this enough. We didn't intend for this to happen. Leave it alone. It's not a broken bug. It's not something that, you know, reduces player experience. If anybody is complaining that the content is too easy for them, when others are saying, well, we don't think it's too easy, we think it's just enough, then whoever is making that complaint has already achieved mastery. 
That's exactly what it is. And so maybe they need to move on to other challenges within the game and then, you know, continue challenging themselves. There are many ways to challenge yourself in Tom Clancy's The Division and many other even invisible difficulty factors like RNG. Even with the RNG that's coming very soon, I don't think it's really going to, you know, solve all the RNG problems because whatever that looks like, we still are yet to see what that looks like in the PTS. So when it goes into the live game deployment, we'll get to see if it's just a promise made on just a promise or if it's truly a promise made in execution. So I don't think Massive can sustain a game with these practices. Um, and I think another thing, too, is they need to look at shelf life. Right now, I've been following some Destiny content creators, and I'm seeing that Destiny is also making similar mistakes as Massive has been making, or one person is borrowing from the other person's book. I know Destiny creators were sitting in their high ground when you know Massive was doing temporary suspensions, and now their game is also now a dumpster fire. Mtash made a video saying Destiny 2 has now become Anthem. Can you imagine that comparison? Now, that's his perspective, but I've also seen some other content creators also express their displeasure at the way they're taking some aspects of their game. So these games are hard to make, that's for sure. But at the same time, you can't keep making the same mistakes to drag out the longevity of the game, thinking that that actually works. Maybe it does work. I guess that's the sad truth. But trust me, with everything that's gone on this year, what we're going to have is this outburst of video games, marketing, consoles, new gen, that is going to really exert a lot of pressure on the game. And this is not the kind of pressure that the Division the division franchise has seen. Because let me explain these pressures. Bear with me for a moment. They're the pressures of the game having been played for a total of about four years. So people in the franchise for four years who may be not, are, are, have not realized that something else might provide a refreshing outlet for them. But once these new games start to show up and they test their hands on any and it does slightly more of a better job or even attracts them, you've lost a certain number of that dedicated player base probably for a long time. And then you also have the pressures of even new IPs that are promising what The Division is doing, even to a small extent. I've seen people compare Outriders or The Division 2. To be honest, I don't think Outriders has can offer what The Division 2 can offer. Let's be realistic. That game is more going to try to compete with Destiny because of so many factors. I've not done a comparison, but until I play the game, I'll be able to provide more of a feedback. I've seen people touting the game. Mm, I don't know. Let, let, let me just put it that way. And then you look at these other games that will also be taking a slice and a chunk of your player base, and you never seem to appreciate your player base. Well, what's going to happen is you're going to be creating a software that has and, and supporting a software that has a very small amount of players left. I don't know. Do you guys not want to make any more money off the Division franchise? Do you guys want to, you know, relegate it to the shelves? Uh, but I, I don't think so. I mean, the Division 1 is still a live, ongoing game right now. And I, I guarantee you, it's probably still making some money of some kind. People are probably seeing the game on sale and buying it. It's just rolling in bucks. Don't you want that for the Division 2 on a bigger scale? Or is business divorced from development? I don't think they are. I think the difficulty is actually getting both of them synergized so that the studio can be in a good place both financially and even in a customer base-wise where they have customer loyalty. If this is not business 101 for anybody to see, I guess, you know, I'm just, I'm just spitting in the wind because trust me, these nerfs and these numbers that you're changing and these numbers that you're tweaking from a value perspective in programming is also going to be affecting numbers from the accounting side. I almost can guarantee that with, you know, just the evidence from the community. So don't think that these 10% nerfs and buffs do not have implications down the road. They actually do. And players are going to continue to respond to their wallets. If that's what you want, nonetheless, Massive, go on ahead. Continue to sail your ship the direction that you want. I guess if you can live whatever whatever results that comes with it, then live with it. But if you really want to set yourself up in a very solid position, I would say be very mindful of player time. You've got to get some more feedback from the community, though. This is just my video. Comment in the comment section. Let me hear what you guys think. I guess that's it for me right now. I'll see you all soon, hopefully, in the next one. Peace.